Hopefully you guys like what you just saw because in this video I'm going to show you exactly how I made this serving tray. But first, I kind of think a little introduction is necessary. I'm Zach, this is Zach Builds, and this is my first YouTube video. Seeing as this is my first video, I wanted to start with a relatively simple project. The challenge on this project isn't going to be whether or not I can actually build it, it's going to be more about whether or not I can summon the confidence and the charisma to be a good YouTube host. And I don't really know if that's possible, but uh, we're kind of burning daylight, so why don't I explain the rest of my thinking on the way to the shop and the truck. Let's go. Didn't think I'd forget you, did I? The whole reason I started this YouTube channel was because I wanted to push people and show them that woodworking and building are much more accessible than they might initially think. But I realized in order to do that, in order to create this YouTube channel, I had quite a bit of learning my, to do myself. I had to learn to be a good host. I had to get over my own innate character and try and push myself. I've never been a good public speaker. I shy away from group situations. To my core, I'm an introvert. But I realized there's a symmetry there. I'm pushing you to start woodworking when you've never woodworked before, well then I should be able to push myself to become a presenter when I've never presented before. All that being said, let's go to the shop and let's build this cutting board, slash serving tray, slash slab of wood that's gonna look kinda cool. Let's do it. Okay, we're here at the shop, we can finally get going. It's raining outside though, so we gotta dash to the front door. Let's go. Sorry, not that I don't trust you, but it's a lot of expensive stuff in here. All right. Oh, welcome to the shop. Put this stuff down, get some lights on in here. Oh, there we go. That's a little bit better. Close the door. Welcome to my workshop. This is where we're gonna be building today. Here's everything you're gonna need. I have a piece of ash here. I have a piece of walnut left over from another old project. Size of the wood doesn't matter. It's actually a good project uh, if you have a bunch of scraps that you're looking to get rid of. Um, I also have a little bit of wood filler, some wood glue, and then miscellaneous little bits and pieces, and you're gonna see where we need these as we go. So here we are over at the table saw. I set the table saw for one inch, and so I'm gonna rip these pieces of wood into a bunch of one inch strips. Also, it's, uh, it's about to get a little loud. That almost looks so cool. a bunch of rectangular prisms made out of wood. Uh, they're one inch by one inch, and I'm just gonna go over to the chop saw now. Well, it's a miter saw, but I call it chop saw. And I'm just gonna cut these things to random lengths, as well as cut off any little defects like this. So now I have all of these little random pieces of wood here. And I'm just gonna take a second and before I glue them all together, I'm gonna really quickly clean up the edges on them with a little sanding block. Done. I'll probably time lapse this because this is, this is gonna take a little bit. Okay, I'm done. The wood's all prepped and ready to go, but there's one quick thing I like to do before I do any glue up. And that's just to cover my work surface with a little bit of plastic sheeting, just so I don't get glue all over my table. A little bit of tape to keep it in place too. I know I want this cutting board to be 12 inches by 20 inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just roughly gonna mark it out on the table. So it's approximately 20 there. Approximately 12. All right. That was the fun part. This is 
where I really get to exercise a little bit of creativity. There's no set rule for what the pattern of this cutting board has to be. I just get to kind of make it up as I go. So I think that's a pattern I'm pretty happy with. I like how it feels. I don't think there's any tweaks I'm gonna make to this. And I'm just gonna start doing this thing now. To keep things organized, I just leave everything where it is and then roll it onto its side. Here we go, wish me luck. Now, the interesting thing about wood glue is that it's actually stronger than the internal bonds in the wood itself if you apply it correctly. So you can actually glue two pieces of wood together, try and smash them, and the wood itself will break before the glue joint between the two pieces of wood. As soon as I learned that, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm off to the races. I'm gonna build some crazy stuff just by gluing wood together. Another thing people ask me a lot is whether or not I glue the little end joints together, and the answer is no, I don't. I just try and stagger all the end joints so that there's there's nice overlappage between the pieces. I don't know if overlappage is a word, but I'm, I'm using it. I just try not to have seams directly next to each other because that creates weak points. A lot of people will like smear the glue, you know, move it around with their fingers. I don't know that that's really necessary. Maybe that's gonna come back to bite me in the butt, but I've never had anything that I've glued together come undone. Okay, so I think we're ready to apply some clamps. So when I first apply the clamps, I don't go crazy tight with them. As you can see, I'm just trying to get a little bit of friction on the wood so that I can push all these end joints together and close any gaps before I really crank them down. So as I'm tightening these clamps, I'm just watching for glue pushing out between the seams. And if there's anywhere where there's not glue pushing out between the seams, I know I need to apply a little bit more force. It's been about 45 minutes. Glue bottle says you only need 30 minutes until you can start removing the clamps. I don't know, it seems like so little time, I always have a hard time trusting it, but I also really want to do this project in a single day, so I'm just gonna trust the directions. Didn't fall apart, so that's a good sign. No glue up is ever really gonna be perfect. If I run my hand along this, some of these pieces are at higher points, some of them are lower, they're all uneven. So that's why I have this tool behind me. This is a thickness planer. Basically puts stuff through and it comes out flat on the other side. It's got rotating blades inside it that kind of spin like this and it takes all the high points off. Because so I'm gonna set it at a height, push it through, take off all the high points, lower it down like a 16th of an inch, put it through again, and I'm gonna keep doing that until I get to the lowest point and then this whole thing will be nice and flat. You can see this is nice and smooth now. It's feeling good on both sides. It's not perfect. We'll do a little more sanding. I'm gonna start sanding with 80 grit sandpaper and then once I'm pretty confident that it's nice and smooth, I'm gonna move up to 220 grit to give it a nice smooth feel. Yeah, that is feeling nice and smooth. Before I move on to 220 grit to get it really nice and smooth, I'm gonna teach you guys a little trick. Don't be thrown by the bottle. Uh, I just emptied out what was in here and filled it up with some warm waters. And I'm gonna spray down the surface of this board. And what that's gonna do is raise the grain of all this wood. And then I'm gonna give another sand to knock down all of that swelled grain. So it'll be really, really smooth. And more importantly, if you ever put something wet on this, you won't end up with a part of it where the grain swells up. It's part durability and part finish. Oh, I could do this all day. It's like glass, this thing. Oh, that's so nice. All right, what are we gonna do next? We're gonna trim off these ends so they're nice and straight and we'll square this thing up. Squaring up these ends is gonna be as easy as a quick cross cut on here. This edge is a little too sharp, so I'm gonna bust out the trim router and I'm gonna give this thing a real quick round over, maybe a chamfer. I don't know, we'll see which bit I can find. As it turns out, round over is the first bit I found. Mm -hmm. 
we are ready to move on to the last two parts of this project. The first of which being installing some handles on this thing to make it easier to move around once it's all loaded up with food and stuff. Nobody likes to be trying to get their fingers under there like, this is empty and that's hard to do. Here's a little trick. Obviously I have to drill two holes in the board to screw these in. But that's a little tricky to do. I could try and measure directly between these two points and then translate it on here and drill it. But there's an easier way to do it. You take a piece of tape, keep it taut, and then place it down on the hardware. Where the screws come through, you just poke it with something sharp there and there. And then you can take this and transfer it over onto whatever you want to cut. And you know the exact distance between your two points. All right, time for my favorite part of the project, which is applying the finish. Today I'm gonna to be using a uh, butcher's block oil, which is actually just a really mild food safe oil that you can use to, you know, give a little bit of protection to the board, but also to make the grain pop and really bring out the color in the walnut and the ash. Application here is dead simple. Just get a cloth or a rag, get a little bit on the end of it, and then just wipe it in. I think it's, I think this is dry enough that I can move it in. Which is good, because I'm getting tired and I kind of want to go home. I'm uh, a little burned out today. It took a lot more out of me than I thought it would to make this little cutting board. Mostly more out of me to record this video, but it was fun too, it was a, it was a good challenge. See you next time, shop. Here we are back at home and uh, as you can see from the window behind me, it's the next day. Yesterday when I got home, I was just too wiped to record a proper outro, so I'm doing it now. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and my presentation style wasn't too horrible. And I hope I've given some hope to the rest of the introverts out there. I, as a special thank you for making it this far into the video, I'm gonna give away this cutting board. So all you have to do is subscribe to the channel, comment down below, you could like too, I'd really appreciate it if you liked the video. And I will pick a winner at random and send you this exact cutting board. Even if you don't care about the cutting board, you still might want to get subscribed too, but I'm going to do a lot more videos in the future and I've got some cool projects planned. I think you're going to want to see them. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Oh yeah, and uh, check me out on Instagram too. All right, see ya.